Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our podcast. This is something that you've seen us do before. We're going to try to do a little bit more regularity, Chris and I, a couple times a month. This way, you have a little bit more direct outreach with both uh, Chris and I as equal partners in this uh, channel that we've been putting together. And Chris has been gracious enough to join us. Uh, it's rather late where he is. It's about 9.15 over there right now. So uh, thanks, Chris, for joining us for this impromptu get-together. How are you, John? How's everything? Oh, good. Just a little bit uh, frenetic over here, as you know. Uh, the world is looking uh, a little bit crazier and crazier and scarier and scare scarier optically. Uh, as you've seen in our Telegram channel, we've, uh, we've been putting up some pretty frequent updates. And uh, I just dropped to our viewers today some breaking news that was pretty exciting. Uh, the BRICS nations, for those who didn't already know, haven't seen this, have officially overtaken the G7 group over in Europe as the um, predominant uh, holder of, of GDP in the world. They're now, G BRICS now represents 35% of the world's global GDP overtaking the G7. And that's a really important demarcation because that helps us see the de-dollarization for what we're looking for with this global reset and reinstatement. Um, and there's also 30 or 40 nations waiting in the wings to join you know, immediately thereafter. So the momentum BRICS has is just gonna continue to build and build we see what's going on, Chris, with tensions being flared with Iran, which we've discussed, as you know, on many, many previous shows with our, our quality guests, where we've talked about that now you're starting to see it front of scenes. The U.S. deep state military is starting to launch attacks against Iran for the intentions of trying to create a war, which they won't get, but they'll get a cover story, which is really what they're after, to be a diversionary tactic from said reset. And in doing so, what's going to happen is Iran's going to shut off the Strait of Hormuz and the Red Sea. Boom, you're going to start to see supply chain issues and that $150 to $200 barrel of oil we've also talked about. And then what we're going to be watching for at the same time is China-Taiwan intersecting. That's for Vietnam, as the viewers probably have are heard of nauseam. And finally, culminating with the event that is the peace de resistance, which is uh, Israel making their grave mistake by attacking the secret nuclear power plants. And then we are days to weeks away from this reinstatement. And so... We don't ever do dates and rates here, but you can see what the event's happening. It's certainly culminating to the inevitability of what we all know is coming. So there, there's a lot to talk about. Also today, uh, we just dropped in the news that uh, UPS is dropping 12,000 jobs. So you're seeing the layoffs continue to happen. We talked on last week's show, as you saw with Nick, roughly 47,000 British companies are going to be going away. Uh, it's, it's a trend that's happening precipitously around the world. So there, there's just going to be a lot to talk about in the days and weeks ahead. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, a lot's going on, <laughs> a lot, a lot for me to digest. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, let's let's talk about today's show. Anyway, you said you've got a few uh, notes written down. We want to answer a few of our viewers' our questions. Yeah, our viewers. Yeah, we're gonna. Where should we start? Well, let's just, yeah, that's a good place to start since we talked about the, the financial, just to mop up that and kind of segue that nicely. <clears throat> I recommend we just answer some of the viewers' questions so they kind of feel like they're being heard. And we have some good news for you folks that we'll talk about after that, where you're going to be able to have more regularity of your questions answered in real time with more frequency. So you're feeling like you're more part uh, inclusive of this process and not so disparate. So uh, a couple of the questions that we get typically are... Um, you know, the currency that we're purchasing now, is it is it the correct one? Yes, if you purchase currency recently, as long as specifically as it relates to the dinar, that's the most frequently asked one, as long as you bought it post Saddam, France reprinted the currency in October of 2003 after Bush Jr. announced in his executive order that uh, the world would be able to capitalize on the dinar. So as long as it's post Saddam and his face is not in the picture, and it looks like the current stuff you're seeing today, you're absolutely fine. Uh, agro checks, <clears throat> we've touched on that. That is an addendum to the Zimbabwe dollars and bonds. Yes, those will. Those are payable to the bearer of note on demand as well. You will be able to get those redeemed. I don't know what the rate's going to be. We don't get into that. But if it's saying that, and we know pretty more or less over the target where we see the Zim going as far as value, then you can estimate that the agro checks are going to do extremely well. The bottom line is you're going to get much more than what you invested in. And that's really at the end of the day, what most investors care about. As long as you do 10 X, a hundred thousand, 10,000 or more, you're, you're way ahead of the game. So I think you'll be 
quite satisfied. And those who don't know what agrochecks are, they're bonds that are invested in the agriculture of Zimbabwe. We've touched, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Chris, we did a video last week that you're going to be putting up here in the next couple of days. Uh, we're doing a four-part series about the dinar, the dong, the zim, and, and uh, the 401k conversion to gold and silver, and why we believe those to be factually good investments, particularly at this time. And when we touched on the Zimbabwe, we touched on, as you'll see in the video here in the next day or so, we touched on the rich, um, not just the minerals and the, all that that we know Zimbabwe has, but also the rich uh, agriculture and crops that they have. They, they have lush waterfalls. They, can, they make great produce over there because their climate is conducive to that. So when you're investing in the agrochecks, you're extensively investing in, you know, the produce and the agricultural output that Zimbabwe has, which kind of marries and dovetails, I think, pretty well to the commodities that we talk about many times that they produce. So that's what that's referring to. This one person asked a really good question. He asked about the Yugoslavian dinar and the ruble as an investment. So I'm going to tackle one thing first. The ruble, yes, it's an excellent investment. We just talked about BRICS and the increasing strength that that alliance, that coalition is, is building a, a more and more and more seemingly by the day. Um, as a result, Russia is the lead dog in that in terms of the alphabetization of the, an acronym of BRICS, or I should say it's right in line next to Brazil, but you get the idea. The ruble in 2022, little, little known fact, was the number one uh, most profitable currency in the world during 2022. Uh, mm -hmm. And so Putin has a lot to do with that, obviously. So yes, <clears throat> the ruble is going to be asset backed. I'm sure, I don't know if it's gonna be exclusively gold, but it's probably gonna be a combination of what they have. So the ruble will be a great investment um, that I'm personally gonna get into after the dinar and dong start to go. I'm gonna improve my position with that. Not financial advice, just telling you what I am doing um, as a personal choice. So yes, I recommend the ruble. Uh, the Yugoslavian dinar, I'm still doing research on that, but if it ties itself to uh, the Jordanian dinar, the Iraq dinar, the Kuwaiti dinar, then yes, it could factor in to be a very good um, position to hold. You have to also remember, Chris, this is for you and for the, for the viewers, um, what we have with Iran is also a situation where we're decoupling the deep state off of Iraq and Iran as well as the big brother. We've touched on that before. As a result, that is going to free up Iran from Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Pakistan, and that surrounding Middle East. So there are many countries that factor in in the liberation process apart from Iraq. And so the other question I get is, is <clears throat> as a segue, is Iran a good investment? And they're referring to what we call in outside of Iran, we call it the Rial inside of Iran, they call it the Toman. So that's just how they, <clears throat> how they label it. Um, they currently have sanctions on them from the U.S. Treasury with what's called the OFAC, the Office of Foreign Assets Control. It's, it's the financial cops, basically. Um, mm -hmm. In corporate parlance, many times corporations have what's called a compliance officer or a chief compliance officer. And that's the person that basically is the legal cops that makes sure that the advisors and the investors are playing above board. They're not money, money laundering. They're not embezzling. They're, they're doing, you know, ethical work. And the OFAC basically plays that same role on a global scale, just for those who don't know. So it's just kind of a cursory education. I've had to learn it as well. It's, it's, it's pretty fascinating, all the different offshoots that they, they represent. But basically, um, if you can get your hands on Iran or you've already had it, let's say five, seven years ago, hold that position. I think you'll find that, that it's going to be beneficial for you in the short and long term. Um, another question people ask is, what are some good currencies to get after the dinar and dong. Well, we've touched on that in, in shows with, with Nick and Denise and many other great guests. Um, you know, I'm certainly positioned in the Thai bot in the Indonesian rupiah. I believe North and South Korean won when they merge next year after the whole situation Kim Jong-un gets resolved optically. That will be a great set of countries to work with. Uh, interesting enough, Chris, I, I was at a, uh, <clears throat> as you know, I was at a music convention for my music world um, called the NAM show, which is the largest trade show in the world for, for music. All the manufacturers and the artists get together and they commingle. And so I was having lunch at a, a neighboring hotel and the woman that was serving me was from Thailand. And she started asking us about the convention just to make you know conversation because the hotel was kind of quiet after lunch. 
And I asked her where she was from. She said, I'm from Thailand. I said, oh, okay. And her husband's an importer and exporter of um, different textiles and clothing goods and things of that nature. And I said, um, <clears throat> I said, I have a question for you. I said, um, my understanding, I was kind of a softball. I want to see how she'd respond. It's so my understanding is the Thai bot is going to revalue sometime next year and do be positioned to do extremely well. It's just, oh yeah, should I go over there, go home six, seven times a year? And they're definitely trending. So I got somebody who's, who's, you know, born and raised from the area to kind of, you know, divulge their hand a little bit that that is a very um, a promising currency in the near future. Uh, the other question we always get the boulevard, we've already covered that a million times. You guys got to start writing notes so you don't ask us the same questions over and over and over. I understand if you're new, but if you've been here a while, you should know. So we're going to expect more of you uh, in this position because you're going to be profiting. So you need to know your investment very well. All 209 countries and provinces will go. I want to be clear about that so we can clear the table with that. Uh, that includes Venezuela. They're the, we might even do, Chris, a, a video on that next month about why the boulevard is a good idea. That's been suggested by a couple people. We might entertain that. But just to, to, for the purpose of this, uh, this segue, um, Venezuela, those who don't know, was the fourth largest economy in the world, rich with oil, gold, silver, many other commodities, and a, and a very stride, uh, strong workforce. Um, they will come back to prominence. We believe it's not going to be in this first tranche, as I call it. Some of you call it a basket. I call it a tranche. We believe it'll probably be sometime next year because these things need to go sequentially in order. Uh, they still have a corruption issue like the rest of the world. They currently have Maduro as their president, who we know is a kind of a corrupt kingpin that's being a placeholder right now, like many other countries. And so President Trump, who have a long memory, in his 2000, uh, 2019 State of the Union speech February, about five years ago, almost to the day, said that, and I quote, we're going to fix Venezuela and work a coalition with them when their new president, Juan Guaido, comes into play. <clears throat> so whether it's him or somebody else, someone will emerge out of the shadows and help restore Zimbabwe because what was great will be great again. We're, we're living in a period of restoration and not just a reset, but a restoring of everything, of, of economies, of integrity, of morals, of how we treat each other, the food that we eat, all the way down the line, everything, you know, affects and begets the other. So yes, the boulevard will absolutely be positioned as well. So there are other questions, but I think that's a pretty good line and share of what we commonly get. Yeah, at least we've uh, cleared up some of them. One question, actually, I, I just want to ask you just off the list that I've got here. Sure. Say it's a question about the Zims, actually. Someone said sure. that they were told to buy only the trillions, the 100 trillion or the 50 trillion or the 10 trillion. They're saying, should they get agro checks as well or should they just stick what they've got? They want to know, um, should should they keep buying more Zims? Because as you know, there's probably about, as far as I know, there's like 50 denominations of Zim notes. It's quite a lot. Yeah, there's, so. there's a lot of them. So I'll, I'll answer one question at a time. So um, yeah. again, we're not telling you what to do. We never would. We're just answering your question as honestly as we can. So yeah. um, I have a, a fairly robust amount of denominations in terms of, you know, the billion notes, the 10 billion notes, the 100 billion and you know, 50 trillion, 1 trillion, 100 trillion. So I've got them fanned out strategically. Um, what I can tell you is all notes that are AA series 2008 and nine will be honored. Um, Nelson Chamisa, we've talked about that. When he returns as the president and is freed up and returns the gold standard, they'll all be honored. So it doesn't matter which ones you have. It's, I mean, it's, it's a question of, it really goes back to the age old question. How much is enough, right? You know, I wouldn't just be buying 100 trillion because everybody told you to. I would be asking myself, what are you going to do with them? What are the purposes? How much do you need? How much is enough? Because 100 trillion is quite a bit of money, to say the least. It's, it's almost yeah. incalculable, really. I mean, none of us have ever been there. Um, so that's my answer as far as the nominations of facts. As yeah. far as agro checks, should you be in them? That goes back to the question Nick asked me uh, on Tuesday. How much dinar should people have? Can't answer that. That's, yeah. that's between you and God, and he may or may not want you to have them, but don't just get them for the sake of getting them. We, this community needs to be a, a, a group of leaders, not followers. 
we don't want to copy everybody else. We want to be authentic to what God is telling us to do, not because I said it, but because he said it. And like I said on Nick's show, he might not want you to have dinar or dong or whatever, or he might want you to have a couple of them or a smattering of all of them. But until you spend that time in prayer and, and silent prayer at that quiet time, you know, Chris, I make a concerted effort every morning. I tell you when we're talking at a meeting, hey, I got to go out in the field and spend time with God. I mean it. I, I don't bring a phone. I don't bring anything. I'm just present. Yeah. Um, but it takes patience, just like wealth takes patience. Um, being a parent, as you know, takes patience. Being married takes patience and discipline. So too does wealth. So cool. don't just get agro checks because you because everybody else got them or you you were told to get, you know. Ask yourself what you would do with them and how much is enough. So that would be my answer for that. So, yeah, hope that answers your question. I've got one last question that I keep seeing coming up, John. Please. Apparently, sure. you're the Shiva man. They tell you you're the Shiva man. John, John's got all the information on Shiba Shiba. Man. What is the latest update with Shiba? Just so we can get this answered. Yeah, so <clears throat> Shiba is great because of a couple of reasons. One, it's a decentralized crypto. So they're on a Shibaverse platform on the Shibarum. We talked about that. There's going to be Shiba Inu will set the tempo. Then it'll be Sheila and Sheena and many other coins that will be in that subset that can you know break you out of the Ethereum monopoly when that when that happens. Um, as we understand right now, as I've looked at it, Satoshi Kazama, the founder of Shiba. Uh, has been trying to kind of play hardball and, and, you know, beat us up on the retail market and keep us from seeing that. So what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing in the communities is that a lot of the Shiba community is just burning. They're, they're buying tokens and burning them. That means that take them out of circulation. They're burning up the supply to try to force Satoshi's hand to make a move to revalue it, to, you know, knock those zeros off and, uh, and revalue them. So um, I have high, high, um, I'll say hopes, but I have I have confidence that uh, in the not too distant future we're going to see that because again we don't do dates and stuff like that. But I would say abutting everything else that's happening with the dinar, the dong, uh, some of the bonds. Uh, you know, we're looking for the SEC. By the way, for that snake Gary Gensler, who's definitely part of the cabal. The Congress is going to make an announcement optically that they're going to sack him, as you would say, or we say in America, fire him and remove him. When that happens, XRP is going to have all of its stuff lifted off. No fines, no nothing. And yeah. we think they're going to start out at $15, $30 and then just go up from there systematically. I don't know how quick it's going to be. We'll have to see how it plays out. But they're going to start to move out of the ashes. And I think around that time is probably where Shiva is going to start to move because what you start to have is a domino effect of momentum. There's one thing, we're just looking for one thing, Chris, to break out, and then they're all gonna go. And I would I would put Shiba in that mix as well. Okay, great, that's uh, that's that question. And then last thing, John, we do have a few questions. We did in our last interview mention about the Real World Academy. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll hand it over to you for you to explain our plans with the Real World Academy and what it is I think <laughs> to do that. Yeah, certainly, absolutely. So. Uh, Chris and I are involved and teamed up in a project called Real World Academy. Uh, you can learn more about that at realworldac, like air conditioner, ac.com. And basically the genesis of it is it's a community page um, that currently work, will be working with fellow patriots like myself, uh, Nick Benyam and Holly and many others. And the idea of it is to bring you the best in breed within the patriot community, what's happening, kind of the inside scoop of things. Uh, this will also allow you to escape the system. We're also going to be teaching you out of the comfort of your own home to create additional streams of income. I'm sure many of you have been looking for ways to generate uh, income or maybe after the RV, once you cashed out, maybe you would like some additional streams of income. Maybe that can be what pays your monthly overhead or something like that, whatever little you have, because you should not have a mortgage or credit cards or any debt, but you know, your food, your ancillaries, kids, stuff that comes up, you know, those of you in that position, or maybe you want to start a business and you don't want to use your winnings from the currency. Maybe you want to create separate streams of income to front that off. It, it, it just gives you options. The whole yeah. point of this is to create pathways and options for you to expand your outreach in all of its different capacities. So um, that's kind of what we're working on. And uh, if you are interested in learning more about this, 
we will leave a link in the description for you to co investigate. Uh, additionally, uh, we're going to have a platform online whereby you can network with business owners. So this becomes a worldwide outreach, not just a local or national, but you'll, you'll be able to network with business owners all over the world. Um, you know, we'll see where that goes. Maybe we can create clubs and things like that where, you know, business owners work together. Maybe they make similar products or services and they can synergize. It just opens up whole new worlds of opportunity. Um, for business and commerce, maybe you have a product that you want to break out post RV. Uh, this is a way to get started now because we're always recommending to you have a plan before it happens. This can be kind of another tool in your tool shed to, to make that happen. Okay, thanks cool. for that. I think you've uh, you've explained everything. Uh, thanks, Chris, for being here today. Thanks everybody for listening and for watching. And we'll okay. see you on the flip side. Take care. Bye bye.